Hi, in this video we're going to be taking a look at some different types of flux and how they perform. So this video was prompted by the fact that whenever anyone asks what type of flux they should use, the default on the internet seems to be to recommend this Amtec NC559 flux. But I've not really seen any evidence to suggest that this is any better than any other type of flux that you can buy, it just seems to be the default answer that people use. So what I wanted to look at is how all of these perform for general PCB soldering. So what we're not going to be doing in this video, and I might follow up in a future video, is we're not going to be testing how well these deal with heavily oxidised components, because if you're soldering old components, for example in an old TV or something like that, and you're doing some repair work, something with some organic uh, fluxes might be more appropriate because it's a lot more active. But for general PCB assembly work where you're going to be soldering new components, so you just want to use it to help flow the solder on the board, um, that isn't too critical. So. Um, you know, most of these should be fairly well performing unless there's, uh, there's something wrong with the formulation. But um, there's a whole range of price ranges across the, uh, the fluxes that we've got on the table. Uh, obviously the Amtec is the most expensive, I think this cost me about £18 for 10cc. Um, and the cheapest was probably this 150 gram tub of uh, flux jelly. And that was something like £3 delivered from Banggood. But I'll put the prices um, as an overlay on top of all of these so you can have a look at what we're talking about. But we've got a various range of brands here. Uh, so we've got some Kester branded stuff, um, some SIF branded, um, MG Chemicals, and some Topnik Gel, Weller, and then some of the more Chinese brands. Um, and these are, you know, most of these are quite generic. You can buy them from a lot of places, but some real cheap um, to really expensive flux. So to do the test, I've ordered some PCBs from JLC PCB. So thank you to JLC PCB for providing these boards for this video. Uh, but basically what we've got is a series of 24 pin SSOP packages on this PCB with an immersion gold finish. So we should get a nice flat uh, surface to solder these um, components onto. And then from LCSC, I ordered some SSOP components. So we've got um, some Padoac uh, microcontrollers, these are actually the cheapest components that I could find in this package. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to drag solder um, each of these components onto the board and each component will be done with a different type of flux. And to do the soldering for this video we're going to be using the KSGER T12 soldering station. So click on the link up here if you haven't watched the video review that I did of this particular station. Uh, but this is a really nice unit, really low cost, excellent uh, performance. And the really nice thing is that you can buy a whole wide range of soldering tips for a really low price and the one that we're going to be using for this video is this concave hoof shaped tip and the really nice thing about this is you can um, hold a nice little ball of solder in the tip and then when you do the drag soldering it, uh, it keeps some solder in here and stops you leaving too much excess solder on the pins so we should get some fairly decent results with the soldering and for cleaning the tip we've got the damp sponge and we've also got this uh, wire wall um, little uh, container here from Banggood. I'll put a link down below for this. This was uh, really low cost but it's also a really nice form factor and just means that you can uh, clean any oxides off the tip to make it nice and shiny. So to start off with I wanted to show what happens if you try to drag solder without any additional flux. So I've applied some solder to the tip of the soldering iron and then when you drag the soldering iron across the pins you get no wetting of solder onto the pins or onto the pads. So then if you apply some flux over the PCB, when you then run the soldering iron along the pads again, what actually happens is the flux causes the solder to wick onto the pads, onto the legs and creates a really good solder joint. And then once you've cleaned up the PCB, you can see we're left with a very nice solder connection. So to start off, we're going to begin with the flux that comes in the yellow pot from Banggood. So this is £3.28 for 150 grams. And we're going to apply it with a cocktail stick onto the leads of the IC. You can see it's a little bit difficult to apply when it's not in a tube. And then if we run the soldering iron along it, you can see it immediately uh, turns to a much thinner liquid and gives us a really nice finish on all of our leads. We'll have a closer look at the cleaned PCB at the end of the video. So then we've got the mechanic solder paste and you can see this seems to have quite a lot of rosin content. It's got that deep amber colour and again applying this with a cocktail stick because it's not in a tube. So again a little bit messy, a little bit inconsistent with the amount that I'm applying here. But once you apply the soldering iron tip to the pins you can see that the flux starts to boil off 
I just missed off that first pin so I had to move backwards again but we get good wetting of solder onto all of the pins it flows really nicely and again gives a really nice finish. Next up is the Pros Kit and this is a much lighter colour it doesn't look like it's really got any rosin in this um, and applying this with the cocktail stick yet again again a little bit messy but the thing that I found with this particular flux paste is that it tends to spit quite a lot so if you look as I run the soldering iron along the pins you can see we're getting little bits of flux spitting all over the board and it's coating the IC. Again it doesn't give too much of a bad uh, finish but it's a little bit messy to apply. And then we've got the Weller which again looks very similar to some of the others so a fair amount of rosin in there. So you can see here that it's a little bit thinner than some of the other paste that we've used so far but it spreads quite nicely on the pins and when we run the soldering iron across the pins it seems to cause the solder to flow quite nicely onto the pads and onto the pins. So this is the first liquid flux that we're going to use and you can see that this is applied with a little brush that's attached to the lid so a really nice application method and it spreads very nicely into all of the joints and I'm not sure if it was just my soldering technique here but it flowed really well for the first sort of 10 pins or so and then started to tail off in its effectiveness so I'm not sure whether that's the flux that boiled off or whether um, you know I just didn't solder those pins very well but I seem to get the same results on the other side of this IC. And then we've got another liquid flux this is Topnik LP1 and it's slightly more environmentally friendly than the other liquid flux same application method and I did actually have the same problem with the last few pins again so I didn't notice this with any of the paste fluxes but those last few pins didn't really want to flow quite as well a little bit of rework with a little bit more flux and it uh, behaved itself but it just needed that little bit of extra work in comparison next up we've got the SIF branded flux which is supplied in a syringe and being dispensed with my solder paste dispenser it's got a really unique smell quite a lemony smell quite pleasant I've applied a little bit too much to the pins here but you can see it gives a really really good result so absolutely excellent flow of solder into the pins and onto the pads. So next up we've got the MG Chemicals No Clean Flux Paste and this was a little bit lumpy and quite viscous it didn't want to come out the nozzle on the syringe very well I had to turn the pressure right up but it did seem to flow quite well it seems to have a fair amount of rosin in there certainly no problems with its actual uh, capabilities as a flux. Then we've got the best branded flux which is a very very thick flux it really didn't want to come out the tip of the nozzle um, and even though it was applied quite heavily onto the pins it immediately caused a solder bridge between pin 1 and 2 and then reflowing the entire joint caused further solder bridges so I had to reapply the flux again and rework it a couple of times just to get an acceptable result so this wasn't a great flux. Then we've got the Relife branded BGA flux paste and this is supposed to be quite a strong activity flux very very thick in terms of its viscosity and I had no real problems with this particular flux I think the only thing that I observed is unlike a lot of the other fluxes this one didn't boil or anything didn't spit anywhere and um, it just sort of sat there and melted into the area but it gave a good result in the end uh, just a little bridge at the end there then we've got the green relife flux which is the halogen free flux and it flows much nicer out the tip of the syringe so really nice flowing and didn't really give any uh, negative results really. I did have to run the soldering iron along the pins a few times but I think that was user error rather than anything else but you can see that gives a really really nice joint. Next up is the Topnik Zell Gel Flux from Thermopasty and this was really thick. I had to cut the tip of the nozzle off to get anything out. Also a little bit clumpy so you saw there it came out uh, quite heavy at the end but this was really good this is probably the best flux that I've tried so far gave really really good results then we've got the KSS flux paste this was uh, again another thick paste which needed the tip to be cut off the nozzle in order to get it out the uh, syringe and this one also flowed really quite nicely no trouble at all really with this flux next up is the genuine Amtec flux the NC559 and I was surprised how free flowing this was out the tip of the syringe. It's supposed to be quite a tacky flux but it was very low viscosity uh, but as you can see it gives really really good results. Next up is the fake Amtec flux from Banggood and this is a little bit more tacky actually it's kind of general behavior is much nicer um, certainly no real trouble in terms of its behavior it seems to work quite well 
Uh, possibly not quite as well as the genuine stuff, but you can see here it gives a really good result. And then finally we've got the Kester Flux, which is high in rosin, and you can see it's got a really deep amber colour. It flows really, really nicely out the tip of the syringe, and this gave outstanding results. So I was surprised how good this was, actually. It uh, possibly was the best out of the lot in terms of how well it caused the solder to flow. Right, so before we draw any conclusions, here's a quick look at each of the ICs in turn, so each of the different flux types after the PCB has been cleaned up. You can see there's quite a big difference in the appearance between each of the solder joints for each flux type, despite the same solder being used across the board. So some of them are quite dull, and some of them are extremely shiny. In terms of the overall solder joint, they'd all be classed as acceptable in terms of IPC standards, so uh, absolutely no problems with the actual soldering. There's just quite a big difference in the appearance and how easy the flux was to work with. So I thought that was really quite an interesting test. Overall, um, all of them were able to do the job, so we all got uh, really good solder joints on all of the ICs. It's just that a couple of them required a little bit of extra rework. For me, there were four that were behaving extremely well. Firstly, the Banggood tub of flux is probably the best value for money out of the lot on here. You get absolutely tons of it, uh, and it behaved really well. Um, I guess the only thing really about these pastes that are supplied in tubs is applying them is a little bit messy and inconsistent. So uh, you do have to tend to use some kind of tool to get it out of here and spread it onto your uh, components. You can use a flux brush a bit like you would do with plumbing. And you probably could dispense it into some syringes, but uh, that's the only downside to these types of fluxes here. But this one from Banggood was very good value for money and worked really well. Also, the Amtec flux was very good. Um, it was quite thin in its viscosity, but gave really good results. Uh, it's just the only downside is it's the most expensive flux on the table here. The Kester flux was also very good. So the results from this were really good and also it dispensed really well. In the video, um, you know, it gave a really nice bead of flux across all of the pins, absolutely outstanding flowing. Uh, the main problem with this is, because it's got such a high rosin content, you can tell by the colour of it, it's really difficult to remove from the PCB and from the IC. So this was the most stubborn, it ended up with some hard deposits on the pins, um, which is fine if you've cleaned off the majority of it, but uh, just a little bit difficult to remove. Then the SIF branded Flux was probably my favourite out of the lot. So this is a relatively cheap, I think it comes in between these two and the Banggood Flux. Um, it's got a really interesting smell but it's certainly not offensive. It flows really nicely out of a 22 gauge dispensing tip and also it gave really good results. So I was quite impressed with this one, this is probably the, uh, the type that I'm going to use moving forward. Then a little note on the liquid Fluxes, you'll notice I had a little bit of trouble with these. Uh, that's possibly my error, but what I suspect was happening is as you're running the soldering iron along the pins, you're actually conducting quite a lot of heat to the other pins uh, just by virtue of pressing it against the PCB and the IC. And I think probably what happened as we got towards the end is the temperature had risen high enough that the flux had burnt off. And obviously, because it's not a gel, it doesn't sit in place. So it probably run off and then the last bit of flux had burnt off and then that's when we started to get solder bridges. So these have their place. And there are various different types of these fluxes that are designed for soldering different metals. So um, these are certainly uh, very useful and they can be uh, really useful for reactivating uh, solder paste and that kind of thing. So they do have their place and they do work, just not um, really for this type of soldering. The Pros Kit uh, was particularly poor in terms of the fact that it was really messy, was spitting everywhere. Um, it gave an okay result, but it was spitting everywhere, and uh, you know, you get it all over your fingers and everything, so a little bit messy there. The Relife Fluxes, um, the orange one wasn't great, um, but the green one flowed almost as well as the SIF and, um, you know, much lower cost. Uh, surprisingly, the Banggood ripoff of the Antuk Tech Flux was also very good. Um, certainly, you, if you bought this, you'd have no problem, and it's one of the cheaper ones, so I certainly recommend this one if you're looking for a low-cost flux. And then the two that I have used quite a bit in the past actually gave me a little bit of trouble in terms of the application, not in terms of the soldering, but um, I don't know if these, this is because they're a couple of months old now, uh, but they were slightly lumpy in the way that they came out of the dispensing needle. So no problem in terms of how they actually did the job, but uh, dispensing them onto the pins of the IC um, was a little bit inconsistent and possibly gave uh, slightly inconsistent results.
So those are just my thoughts. You can draw your own conclusions from the video, um, but hopefully you found this video useful. I'll put a link to all of these in the description down below. If you've got any comments or disagree or want me to uh, do any further tests, then don't forget to leave a comment down below. It's always really useful to hear your thoughts. But until next time, thanks for watching.